Hawkeyes, your daily podcast on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Hawkeye Nation, to another episode of the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast, your daily podcast covering your Iowa Hawkeyes on the Locked On Podcast Network. As always, I am your host, Andrew Wade, and as we do after every single game, which has been, at this point, five victories in a row this season to start the season, we have former Iowa running back LaShawn Daniels on to help us break down this game. And I want to quickly take a second to remind you and thank you for making the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast your first listen every single day. You can get the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast free on all podcast platforms and at YouTube at Locked On Hawkeyes. LaShawn, what a freaking game. I am pumped. I mean, it is it's uh, 7 a.m. Mountain Time, 8 a.m. Central Time. We're excited. It is Saturday. What a way to start a weekend. Iowa blows out Maryland. But first, before we get into any of that, how are you personally doing today, man? Uh, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. You know, another week, another Hawkeye win. So, I mean, I have no complaints whatsoever. We're feeling good on this Saturday morning. Absolutely. I want to quickly, if anyone's watching the YouTube channel, you'll notice that I am in a different background. Uh, that's how much I love talking Iowa football. I am up in Steamboat Springs celebrating a buddy's, uh, really good buddy's girlfriend's birthday. So it's going to be a lot of fun this weekend and uh, really want to talk some Iowa football though. They actually were very kind to me and uh, made sure to pick out a bar last night that had the Iowa game on, which was great because I was going to watch it regardless. Um, we could have been out at a fancy restaurant. I had the phone with me watching it. It would have happened regardless, but here we are talk Iowa football. They win 51 to 14 over Maryland and coming into this game, Maryland was a team that was 4-0. They'd beaten West Virginia. They'd beaten Illinois, Howard, and Kent State. A lot of people, national media included, were looking at Maryland and saying, Tagaviola is legitimate. This kid has improved his decision-making from last season. The kid who last year had a lot of ups and downs. I mean, he would go, even in between games, great first quarter, terrible second quarter, great third quarter. You could tell the arm talent he has there. Maryland coming into this game, the second best passing rated pass team in PFF. Right in the nation. That's amazing. People do not want to give Iowa the respect. Iowa came out as if they had been hearing that the entire week, and they were pissed off, and they were annoyed about people talking about this Colorado State game, and they made sure to make a statement. LaShawn, I wanted to get your first thoughts on this. Um, were you worried at all coming into this game about how Iowa would respond to a uh, highly touted Maryland team? No, no. I wasn't worried, um, you know, how they would respond because, I mean – kind of the how it felt like out of the building you know, last week. I mean, everyone knew. I mean, last week we felt like it's good to get a win, right? They felt good about winning football games because, again, it's hard to win um, in college football. But that being said, you know, a lot of guys acknowledged that they weren't sharp on, you know, really any of the phases that they felt like last week. Um, so I knew that Coach Ference and, you know, the rest of the team was going to figure out, you know, a way to improve and get better. and you know, come out uh, last night on, you know, the right foot and, you know, start off on the right foot to get the ball back rolling again. So, you know, I wasn't too worried because I know what that preparation is like. I know what's going in um, to getting ready for for a game like that, especially on a short on a short week. Um, and, you know, I felt good that the that Coach Ferentz and the team is going to make the right changes and do the things um, necessary to prepare themselves yesterday for the game. Absolutely. I, I think when I was starting to do the research on this game and figure out what Maryland was going to bring to the table, I was a little concerned more about Maryland. I was like, what is Maryland going to do? And then I thought about it a bit more. And I thought if there's one consistency out of all of these units, one consistency for the last 10, 15 years, it's that Iowa's defense is amazing. Phil Parker has a simplistic scheme that does create turnovers. This is not an anomaly. This is a trend at this point. Uh, yes, there is some luck involved in turnovers, but it also requires corners who can catch the ball. It requires linebackers and DNs who can get their hands up and tip passes. It requires corners who can stay with their guy like Dane Belton did. Um, mm -hmm. So when I when I thought about this, the only consistency I could see was Iowa's defense. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to take that consistent unit every single time when it comes to breaking down this game. And looks like we're right, right? I mean, uh, yeah, Colorado State, Iowa struggles in those games at times against some of those lesser teams. I don't know. Is that something I just kind of have a perception of, or would you agree that maybe Iowa, some of the, some of the group of five teams, maybe 
plays a little down to their competition until they get a little bit of a, a wake up call and then they turn it on. I mean, is that is that just me or is that something that Iowa has t- traditionally done? Ah. Uh... I guess in a sense, it's, okay it's, to definitely, call out on me, man. it's definitely something that we've done, but it's not something that we consciously, you know, think of, you know, ever doing right. And we always want to go into the game and we want to score every single time um, we have the football. We want to basically cause a turnover, um, you know, whether it's interception or fumble or cause them to go on downs, right? Every single time the defense is out there. So um, I'm not going to say that we necessarily play down to the opponent in a sense. Um, or like that we're thinking about playing down to the opponent. I think it's just something that that kind of just happens, right? And then, you know, you get punched in the mouth a little bit and you get yelled at a little bit on the sideline. You yell at, you know, in the locker room at halftime. And then you're just like, okay, all right, let's stop messing around. Let's let's hone back in. Let's get back to our fundamentals. Let's get back to our game and doing the things that we do and um, go out here and let's win this football game. So I definitely feel like, like it happens probably more than it should but i mean i feel like at this point i mean our fans i mean you should be used to it right i mean it's it's not like it's it's really changed you know throughout the years right i mean you think back to you know 2009 right i mean you're playing northern iowa and you have to win on you know two block kicks right i mean it's not like this is something that's that's like really like new to us as far as you know when you're playing uh smaller schools and being in close games so uh we don't ever think about uh, playing down. Like we never take um, preparation lightly. We're still always focusing on that team that's ahead of us. It's just something I think that just subconsciously happens. Um, and then we, you know, finally, you know, after getting punched a little bit, we pick it back up. So I think that's a great, I mean, I think that's a great way to look at it and a great, um, per, you know, a great way to see inside what an Iowa football player has kind of gone through. Cause you're absolutely right. I mean, but these teams also are, they're giving you their absolute all. They are doing everything they can to beat you. They're coming into this game knowing that there is literally nothing to lose. They are getting paid to probably get blown out, but they're also going to give every chance they can to beat you and put some really great stuff on tape. So, I mean, they're Mm -hmm. giving you 110%. Uh, Northern Iowa, um, you know, clearly not as talented as Iowa, but I don't want to play Northern Iowa (laughs) because they are going – I mean, those are a a lot of those kids, especially our kids who maybe kind of got recruited by Iowa – but didn't Mm. get a scholarship offer or maybe they got a scholarship offer, but they weren't going to get playing time right away. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of kids that probably hold a little bit of, uh, I want to show Iowa what they missed out on. And I mean, that's, we've kind of seen that in the past, but nevertheless, Iowa comes out, they stomp Maryland. And I wanted to talk about the turnovers and the fact that this passing defense is truly phenomenal. I mean, what we're, what we're witnessing right now is an amazing secondary taking charge of this unit. Coming into this game, Tag of Viola, again, 75% completion percentage, over 1,300 yards passing, one interception, which was a tipped ball. After this game, he had 157 yards on just over 50% completion percentage, two touchdowns, five interceptions. His backup comes in and also throws an interception. Uh, and when I look at those interceptions, I mean, yeah. I can't really see a play where it was like he just threw a terrible pass. I mean, the first interception of Riley Moss, he got lit up. Uh, There was a couple tip balls. I thought Dane Belton's interception was amazing. He was basically running the wide receiver's route for him. He probably shouldn't have thrown that ball considering Dane Belton was the wide receiver at that point. Um, Is there anything else you saw from an interception perspective or a pass coverage perspective that you're like, wow, this is pretty impressive? Um, First things first, I mean, guys on defense playing their assignments, you know, textbook literally fundamental like teach tape type fundamentals out there on that back end um everyone is in the right spots they're exactly where they should be and they're reading you know what the offense is doing um and you know for example when dane belton you know was in man coverage right he you know recognized the route that was coming right because i think they, they had ran that um they had ran similar routes like that for a few times during the game um and you know obviously uh, they probably talked about that more and more on the sideline like hey this is what they're trying to do and lo and behold right he recognized the play recognized the route um and then basically ran the route for him um and ended up being as you mentioned a terrible decision by the quarterback just awful decision by the quarterback i mean there's a few throws there that just shouldn't have made where he probably should have just either tucked it and ran or just taken the sack but um you know i think all the credit really has to go to the 
the secondary and the linebackers, you know, playing their assignments and being at the right places, you know, where they should be. Right. I mean, they're not um, trying to be Superman. They're not trying to cover different things. Um, they're just focused on doing their job. And I think that's the most important part. And then, you know, we didn't come away with any uh, sacks last night, but there were plays where, you know, the defensive line is getting pressure and forcing um, the quarterbacks to throw the ball sooner than they may have wanted to, um, forcing forcing those interceptions. So really, yeah, Maryland made terrible decisions, um, you know, quarterback-wise as far as throwing passes um, and this and that. But, I mean, really a lot of the credit has to go to – our secondary and the way that they're playing right now, the way that they're playing their assignments. Um, because, you know, as you, as you mentioned a little bit earlier, right, they're probably getting sick of hearing about, you know, this Maryland team, you know, they're four and right. They've been passing all over the field, blah, 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 blah. Right. It's another tackle by, by Loa quarterback, right. All this jazz, they're probably just sick and tired of hearing about it because I know they constantly were talking about it inside the building to kind of get those guys uh, riled up. So, um, really all the credits go to our defense and um, the secondary, especially on playing their assignments and being at the right spot at the right time. Without a doubt. I mean, even Riley Moss's post-game comments, uh, you could tell the dude was pissed off. I mean, he he did not want to let Maryland have any opportunity to do anything worthwhile in this game. He was, he was amped up um, after <laughs> the game, obviously for good reasons, but I mean, he, you could tell that they were clearly – They've heard this talk throughout the week, and they're ready to show Maryland what Iowa football is all about. Uh, coming up, I want to talk a little bit about the one drive that had Iowa fans freaking out a bit. Maryland very comfortably driving down the field to score that first touchdown. After that, it was all Iowa. But I do want to talk about that a little bit to get some of your thoughts on some of those deep crossers. But I want to tell you all about Prize Picks, College Bowl Fanatics. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. I personally love this, and I know that you will too. And if you listen to me on Friday's episode, I told you. You got to take any money on Tag of Viola to throw more than two interceptions. You know what? I was right. You could do that at Prize Picks. Prize Picks has more college football props than anyone in the world and offers all the star players like Tag of Viola, other Power Five, as well as mid major players you might not have even heard of. They probably even had a prop on Arlen Bruce. I didn't check, but if you would have got Arlen Bruce to score a touchdown, it probably would have been plus a thousand. Boy, did he hit on that. That was awesome. Prize Picks allows mixed sports entries, it allows you to combine different player props. Entries can be made within 60 seconds or less. It is literally that easy. And Prize Picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals. So don't hesitate. Get some money right now. Go to checkoutprizepicks.com and use promo code Locked On. That's L O C K E D O N. Or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. And again, you got to tell me on some of those things because I was doing pretty well on my Friday show and making some predictions for this game. The only thing I didn't hit on was that under. I also want to thank you all for making the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast your first listen every single day, reminding you that we are free on all podcast platforms and wherever you get this YouTube channel. Obviously, uh, we are here as well. LaShawn, so we talked a little bit about the defense. We talked about the secondary and how they came prepared to play. There was one drive, though, that did concern some fans. Uh, Maryland was driving down the field pretty comfortably. They're making some – Tagovailoa had a very good drive that drive. And I think the thing that concerned me a little bit more than anything else was the fact they were hitting on deep crossers. Mm -hmm. And I want to mm -hmm. get your thoughts on that. One of the things is Phil Parker's defense requires the quarterback to make a very smart read consistently throughout the entire drive. He's saying, you know what, we might give you one play like that, but we're not going to be able to – you're not going to get eight more than likely. Most college quarterbacks are not going to be able to pick apart this defense – um, I want to just get your quick thoughts on that drive and if there's anything to be concerned about uh, the fact that Maryland was able to come down and drive down Iowa pretty easily for a drive. Yeah. Um, so, you know, after watching the game and taking going back and looking at that that drive that Maryland scored upon, um, we were in obviously a lot of zone because, I mean, again, that's our really our bread and butter as far as coverage goes on the defensive side. And. Um, you know, you got to give some credit to Maryland, right? I mean, when you are in the zone, right, the quarterback, as you said, right, has to make the right decisions. They have to make the right reads and right right throws. So where there, those deep crosser routes were hitting, I mean, that's where that open spot and that zone coverage was, right? And um, they had their offensive coordinator make some, make some good play calls to get them in a successful, successful position to be able to take advantage of that. Um, but as far as being worried about it, no, I don't think they really should be because they went and made the adjustments after. Granted, 
that kid did get hurt, unfortunately. Um, I think he's obviously a really good player for them, and, and it sucks that he had to go go down in that way. Um, so obviously, I think took a little bit of a big chunk of air out of them in that offense. But um, you know, that being said, right on defense, I mean they're making the, they went and made the adjustments, right? I mean, again, teams are going to go down the field, teams are going to score. It's going to happen, right? Those coaches are getting paid big bucks too. Their guys are on scholarship too. They're going to make plays, right? That's why they're out there. Um, so uh, it's it's going to happen throughout the year. There's going to be times where teams go down and score maybe quite a little bit easier than you may would have liked it. I mean, heck, but it still took them, you know, eight plays, you know, to drive down the field, right? I would much rather that be the case instead of, you know, giving up, um, you know, a three-play drive and a 60-plus yard touchdown, right? So um, I don't think there's really too much to be worried about. Right. They just had they just, their offense coordinator and their team. They made the right plays. They made the right um, play calls. And, you know, we went and we adjusted to it afterwards, as you can see, you know, <laughs> with the final score. So absolutely. You mentioned Dante Dimas going down uh, prayers up for him. Uh, that was a gruesome looking uh, in, I mean, oh my gosh, uh, that nice. just looked so nasty. I felt so bad for him. He was having yep. a fantastic day, four receptions, 61 yards. He was really the bread and the butter of that offensive production to that point. And even in the season, he's the leading receiver, uh, over 400 yards receiving, 24 catches, three touchdowns. I mean, this is the guy who's yep. been the catalyst for their offensive production. So a big loss for Maryland. And again, uh, some things are more important than football. Uh, yeah. I hope he hope he is very healthy uh, or can get healthy quick or whatever it might be. I don't know what the official diagnosis was, but uh, definitely want to give my my thoughts out to him. You mentioned yeah. the fact that these guys are getting paid big bucks, right? Offensive coordinators are paid to score on defenses. <laughs> uh, the Iowa football team is not the 2001 Ravens. We're not stopping <laughs> everyone on every single drive. They will yeah. score at times. I want to revert or flip it over to our offensive side of the ball. And there were a lot of concerns. Coming into this game, yes, mm -hmm. Iowa finally had some explosive plays. We were very excited about that. We mentioned after the Kent State game, we would like to see more explosive plays. We've also mm -hmm. talked about Spencer Petrus literally every single show uh, about <laughs> whether or not Spencer Petrus is the answer. And I think I think last night maybe convinced a small contingent of of haters that Spencer Petrus is probably the guy. He's fine. I mean, he is. He's had a really good season at this point. But there is also a larger contingent that is very upset about Brian Ferentz's play calling up until this game they wonder why are we not opening up the playbook why are we not having more explosive plays why is the run game not working i thought brian ferens called a beautiful game last night it just felt like everything he was calling worked uh the running game hasn't been that successful uh or at least wasn't successful against colorado state now colorado state was crowding the box but i thought what iowa did they came out and they were passing they opened mm -hmm. up the run game mm -hmm. by passing, and I thought that was really fun to see. And then Tyler Goodson was getting a lot of holes. So um, we'll just kick it off there. Generally speaking, what were your thoughts on the offensive production and Brian Ferentz's play calling? Yeah, I thought the offense, you know, did what they had to do. Um, again, I think that's going to be a consistent theme throughout the year um, because, as you've seen, I mean, the offense has gotten better and better every single week, um, which is going to be, you know, critical for us as we get deeper into Big Ten play. Uh, but you know, when you look at last night as a whole, I think opening up the, the game with passing and consistently passing, I think is huge, right? I mean, most of the time, right. When you think of Iowa football, you think of first and 10 outside zone, second and 10 inside zone, third and medium third to short, right. Um, some type of quick pass to just get the first down, right. I mean, that's kind of what you think of, you know, offensively, uh, yesterday, Brian basically flipped that script all the way on top of its head and was like, you know what, let's just go out and pass the football, right? Let's get Spencer comfortable early, which I thought was a great idea. Um, and, you know, there was holes in the run game. Um, Production-wise, I mean, early we had some we had some decent runs and then kind of stalled. They, Maryland got a little bit more stout. And then, you know, Ivory got in there and started making some plays in the run game, which was fantastic. I love to see that. Um and it all, I think, came back to because he started wanting to open up the game with passing. And I think that is going to be, um, you know, critical for the offense's success because not only is it going to force the defenses to back off a little bit, right? They're not going to be able to have um, seven, eight guys in the box, right? The guys going to have to play off, right? Because they're going to have to 
actually respect the receivers and the receivers get involved in the passing game. I mean, we got there's all players all over across the field as far as skill guys. I mean, the skill, the skill groups has just been, I mean, it's almost like, I'm not going to say like it's night and day since I was there, but I mean, we got guys literally all over the field that can make plays, <laughs> can make plays, can make plays, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's something that's, you know, hasn't really been common, right? In Iowa football. So when we get, you know, more more guys that can make plays. We can have freshmen in there that can make plays, right? You want to get those guys involved in the game. And then it forces the defenses to kind of take their eyes off Tyler a little bit um, because, you know, there's other guys out there that can make plays. So I think that Brian has done a fantastic job of, um, you know, getting his guys in the right places to be successful and doing a great job with um, getting Spencer, um, you know, better and better every single week. Yeah, I mean, uh, first I want to shout out to Ivory Kelly Martin. You mentioned him. Had a phenomenal comeback game. Eight attempts, 62 yards. Uh, There was that one run that he almost got the first down on. Honestly, I feel like a truck could have went through that hole, but the way he (laughs) hit it was, I mean, he was off the races. I mean, he was ready to roll. So that was um, great to see him running with confidence. And he was, I don't know if you noticed this, you probably did because you're a former running back, but he was protecting the ball when he was around people. Mm -hmm. Both hands on the ball. He was not letting that thing go. He got yeah. a little. I'm gonna run the like. I'm close to contact. Both hands on the ball. I'm not fumbling this ball. So, um, a yeah. lot of fun to see. Uh, and also, I want to say no disrespect to my comment to the former Iowa wide receivers you played with, Tavon Smith, uh, Matt mm-hmm. Vandenberg. Those guys were fantastic wide receivers. But the depth of the wide yes. receiver group is significantly yes. better now. Not a saying. Not necessarily saying that those guys were not good. Just the depth yeah. of Iowa wide receiver group. The fact that you can go six wide receivers down, you get Jackson Ritter, who made a fantastic catch. I mean, that just goes yeah. to show you how strong this wide receiver group is. And I want to continue yep. that discussion because Arlen Bruce also had a fantastic game. Last week it was Keegan Johnson. This week it was Arlen Bruce. But I do want to tell you all about Sweat Block. Sweat Block has literally changed my life. I used to have to pick out shirts based off of whether or not I was going to sweat through it. Is it a day over 60 degrees? I'm probably not wearing gray, probably wearing black or white because it hides a little better. I no longer have to do that, though, because Sweat Block has legitimately changed my life. I've tried a lot of different products, but Sweat Block's antiperspirant wipes are legitimately revolutionary. Sweat Block is stronger and more effective than most clinical antiperspirants. You simply apply it at night before bedtime, go to bed. The next morning you wake up, wash, and go about your day without worrying about sweat. Guaranteed. I know this will sound too good to be true, but I literally only have to use Sweat Block once or twice a week. It keeps me dry the entire time. No more pitting out. No more picking my shirts based off of which one will hide sweat better. If you or someone you love is dealing with this, you have to check out Sweat Block. Get it today for 20% off at sweatblock.com with promo code locked on or at Amazon and CVS. I also want to remind you, Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar on the market today. Nine delicious flavors plus the occasional limited time flavor. At some point during the season, LaShawn will have, a, have an opinion on the Built Bar because <laughs> I, will, I will eventually get those mailed out. It has been quite a week, but Built Bar is so phenomenally tasting, but they're even better for you. And that's what I love about these Built Bars. Between 17 and 18 grams of protein between each bar, only 130 to 180 calories, four to five grams of sugar, and only four to five grams of net carbs. Nine amazing flavors, all tasty, all healthy. And Built Bars are the official protein bar of the USA track and field team. And if it's good enough for them, it's probably good enough for us. So go to BuiltBar.com and use the promo code LOCKED15. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5. And you'll get 15% off your first order. Use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at BuiltBar. Dot com And thank you all again for making the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast your first listen every single day. We are free on all podcast platforms and on YouTube at Lockdown Hawkeyes. All right, LaShawn, we talked about the offense a little bit. I want to get into that wide receiver group. Uh, last week, Keegan Johnson, a true freshman making some big time plays. This week, it's Arlen Bruce. We've talked about this depth. Nico Regani, he's still there. Tyrone Tracy, he's also there. Charlie Jones made some pretty darn good plays. But it was Arlen Bruce, in my opinion, who stole the show from the wide receiver group. Six catches on six targets, 43 yards receiving. I get 43 yards receiving and one touchdown. I thought Arlen Bruce played phenomenal. And again, we talked about Brian Ferentz, his play calling. I thought this this game was was truly awesome. And it's going to make it so much more difficult to game plan for Iowa Hawkeye offense. Because you cannot, like you said, it's first down run. Second down, run. Third down, if we can, let's run it again. I mean, but you don't have that ability to do that because they're able to open up the playbook a little bit more because they have so much depth at the wide receiver position. Anything else you want to say about the wide receivers uh, or Arlen Bruce in general before we move on to I thought was a pretty impressive display of, of pass blocking and run blocking by the offensive line? Yeah. Um, you know, 
Arlen Bruce is again, young guys taking advantage of opportunities, right? I think, uh, you know, as a freshman, right. Or even, even, you know, second year player, right. I mean, you, your opportunities are going to be few and far between. So you have to really make sure that you are, um, first off, you know what you're doing when you're out there. And then when you are out there an opportunity comes and, you know, they try and give you the ball that you're able to go make a play and do something with it. So um, I love to see um, more and more young players stepping up, getting out there when they have the opportunity to be on the field, that they're not wasting the opportunity. Because, again, those are few and far between. And when you do go out there and you do make those plays, right, you earn the, you earn the right to get more playing, playing time, right? It doesn't matter you know, how talented you were in high school or any of that, right? You have to earn your right on the football field. And the fact that those guys, those young guys are being able to do that, I think is is really, really, really impressive. I think that's what makes, in my opinion, the Iowa Hawkeye football program so fun to watch and cheer for and support. And the fact that it doesn't matter how many stars are behind your name on 24-7 sports. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. a single lick of what you did in high school. It's what you do mm-hmm. when you're inside the workout room when you're inside the weight room, I mean, it's it, when you're inside the facility, what you do in there is what counts and what matters. And it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It's just as long as you can put and be productive in that game, they're going to get you in that game. And Arlen Bruce, like you said, taking advantage of that opportunity. Ivory Clay Martin had a fantastic game. Uh, Tyler Goodson, I thought uh, from a receiving standpoint, had a phenomenal game and made some really not. I mean, there was a couple plays that were probably blown up and he was able to get out of it. I want to talk to you a little bit about that, though, because last week we talked uh, Tyler Goodson not hitting the hole as mm-hmm. hard as we would have liked to see. Um, I'm curious what your thoughts were on his running style in this game, because there were a couple of times where he tried to do a lot and it worked. And there's a lot of times where he tried to do a lot and he was stuffed in the backfield. So what are your thoughts from a running back perspective on Tyler Goodson? And just before we get into it again, Tyler Goodson, I thought, had a for the most part, a pretty good game, especially from a receiving standpoint. But it's always important to talk about some of the maybe negatives that happened in that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll talk about his receiving in a little bit. But, yeah, I'll hit on the rushing stuff. Um, As you said, I mean, there's a couple times, you know, where he did a lot and got, you know, something out of nothing, right? I think, for example, one that comes right off the top of my head, I think they were in the low red zone and they ran like a draw play and, basically make the, make the guy miss twice, right? Um, on a fantastic, fantastic cut, uh, like basically double jump cut, right? And that was an example of him, you know, doing a lot and getting something out of it. And there's some times where, um, you know, where there's there's not really a lot there and he's still trying to kind of dance around in a sense um, where I feel like there would be times where you'd, be, you'd just be better off just kind of sticking your foot in the ground, just getting what you can, right? Because, um you know, those negative yards plays can um, kill drives. So I think he's just got to find that right balance, right? There's a there's a right, um, you know, happy middle. And I think it's going to, you know, be, continue to, to come, you know, as they work in the film room and, um, you know, as he gets more and more and more playing time as obviously the season goes on. Because, again, he's going to be the guy that we're going to be riding the most um, as far as the um, – you know, touches on the offense go. So um, he's got to find, he's definitely got to find that right balance. And I think it's going to help, um, you know, him with the consistency in the run game. Right. Cause I feel like there's a lot of times it's like, um, you know, he'll get a big run, right. It'll be like 15 plus yard run. And then like the next four runs will be like, it'll be like maybe a one yard, two yard, and then maybe like a negative play. Right. And, Sometimes they come from, you know, him doing too much. And then sometimes it comes from, you know, obviously just offensive line not sticking on their blocks and the defense making a play. Right. So I think it's got to be that kind of happy medium um, of doing what you do best. Right. And that's making guys miss. Um, And then, you know, other times just, hey, sticking your foot in the ground, using that 200 pound frame and protecting yourself behind those passes, getting positive yards. So uh, if because it's a very big contrast than when you watch Ivory go and run and he's basically he basically dang near makes like no cut <laughs> when he goes on, off the um, races. One cut and yeah. Let it roll. yeah, literally he just gets the ball, just sticks his foot in the ground, doesn't look for anything else. He's just like, OK, that's what I see. I'm just going to burst through it. Um, um, granted, it helps because he has that, you know, excellent foot speed. You know, I don't know what his 40 or 10 yard time is, but It'll I'm assuming it's probably pretty good. Yeah, I'm assuming it's probably pretty good, right? So um, he could take some, you know, from Ivory's book, 
and just kind of stick his foot in the ground sometimes just try to burst through and get what you can um but you know i know it's not it's not as it's not as flashy um you know that's some of that dirty work but it's definitely going to help him i think um have more success in the run game because i think like yesterday he was like three and a half yards of carry or something like that um and some of a lot of that came from you know obviously taking those negative yards plays right so yeah he just got to find a happy medium of all right when can i take advantage of these defenders and when can i make these guys miss and then when can i just hey just take what the defense is giving me and just um just try to get some positive yards so absolutely I and mean, no guy no better guy to learn from than former second round pick liddell betts who played yep. the Redskins for several years. I mean, he's going to help yep. correct some of those things. But I'm curious. This is super off topic here. Ivory Kelly Martin, very good foot speed. You played with Riley McCarron, I believe, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Same, about the same time frame. He ran a yeah. 4 3 6 40 yard dash, which no one expected. Um, <laughs> did you realize Riley was that fast when you were playing with him? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I did not realize that Riley was that fast when we were playing with him. I mean, like, I remember, like, he had, like, Whenever we would do testing, like I was like, I always thought, like, man, like he runs like pretty good, but to think that he was four three fast, I never thought that. And then, like, then towards the end of that 2016 season, I was like, man, I've never seen like Riley move this well. And it's like I think he take he took a punt return against Illinois for a touchdown, right? And I was like, oh, he looks pretty fast out there. And then the following week against Nebraska, he takes like a, a slant route like 60 yards for a touchdown. And I was like, huh. I didn't know this guy could move that well. And then when we got on the tape, like training up, leading to it, like I knew that he was going to run fast um, because obviously you we're training with each other. You hear everyone's times like as we're doing these things. I knew he was going to run fast, but to run that four three, I was like, whew, I, <laughs> I didn't know you had that in you. And it definitely helped him, you know, quite a bit because he was able to play in the NFL for a couple of years as well. So, um, no, I had no idea that Riley was that fast. <laughs> That's impressive. Yeah, I mean, I, I not to say that it was only because of his speed, but that four three six mm-hmm. definitely raised some eyebrows and yes. uh, kept him on a roster for a while for the Patriots. So, mm-hmm. um, kudos to that guy. I was just, I was just curious how that, how that all worked out for me because I was like, wait, uh, what Iowa receiver just ran a four three six, and uh, why were, why was CJ not throwing deep to him every single? I mean, like, <laughs> what's, yeah. what's happening here? Um, so that's, that's funny. So uh, to kind of wrap up this show for today, I mean. I think offensively, Iowa had a pretty good game. I want to talk a little bit about the offensive line because we've talked about the fact that we wanted to see a more consistent rotation. They're still trying to figure out what that rotation looks like. I don't know if you noticed or saw, but uh, they changed the starting lineup again, and it was actually a change that I don't think anyone was – I was not expecting at all. Uh, They had Mason Richmond, Nick DeYoung of the tackles. You had Tyler Linderbaum of the center. And then Cody Ince got benched, essentially. Well, he played a lot, but he didn't start in this game. Um, Connor Colby getting the start, a true freshman and Kyler shot. I thought Kyler shot was going to start. I thought Kyler shot was going to get a lot of snaps. I was not anticipating Connor Colby taking the start from Cody. And so, um, however, pass blocking wise, I thought Iowa did a pretty good job. Yes. They allowed a couple sacks, um, later in the game. Uh, Maryland though, came into this game, averaging 18 and a half pressures per game and i thought iowa's offensive line did a much better job this week than they did against colorado state um am i just making that up was that the alcohol talking or did you see the same thing no i definitely saw the same thing um they were doing a pretty good job of keeping um the pocket pretty clean i'm trying to think there might have been only one time where spencer was sacked where spencer might have been able to get the football out to the running back on the play but um even then, I mean, I thought like they kept a pretty clean pocket and it opened up big plays. Like, for example, on that Tyler Goodson 60-yard um, touchdown reception, um, they ended up bringing five guys, offensive line, sorted it out, um, able to pick up every single person um, that did come, um, left Tyler, you know, one-on-one um, with the option route, which, you know, as a running back, as an option route on the linebacker, I mean, that's easy money. You're just like, okay this when can i how 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 quickly will i be in the end zone um and then uh you know the offensive line and and the run game was opening up massive holes right i mean we saw it a lot of times um i think it was more evident i think when ivory was running the football uh yesterday uh that there was just huge holes right guys didn't have to do too much right i mean these guys are getting pushed up front they're getting to to the linebacker level um allowing our skill guys to get into 
on that next level and to go out there and make plays and to create explosive runs, right? And when you're able to create explosive runs in the run game, right, it's all going to be more helpful um, for your team because that means you're able to move the football, you're able to sustain drives. Um, and then, you know, when you're able to protect the quarterback and allow him to go out there and, you know, make the right throws and have time to make the right decisions, right, it's just that much better um, for us as a football team. So, yeah, I thought the offensive line did a fantastic job yesterday. And um, all the guys, honestly, all the guys that were in yesterday, I think, think played well. Uh, so, you know, as long as they can can, can keep up that consistency, um, it's going to be huge um, this upcoming week against Penn State and, you know, more important, you know, as the season goes on. So, Absolutely. And that's a big game against a top 10 Penn State, as long as Penn State can take care of business um, today as we're recording the Saturday. Uh, that'll be something to watch. But Iowa, Penn State, going to be quite a fun game. I'm a little bummed it's not at night. Uh, I think a night game at Kinnick would have just been a death sentence for Penn State. Hopefully it was kind of my idea, but uh, yeah. nevertheless, we, we play the, the, the hand that the cards are, the cards, the hands are whatever. I'm trying to say you know, <laughs> here and clearly the word's not coming out. We play the hand that we're dealt. Is that what it is? We play the hand that we're yeah. dealt. Okay. Yeah. 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 That sounds okay. right. Yeah, I'm like, this is not <laughs> coming out any way that I thought in my head. Um, the last question I want to ask you, LaShawn, though, is uh, – out of all the teams in the Big Ten, what is your ranking in terms of how much you hate the teams? And where does Penn State fall on that? Mm, mm. Uh, you know, I don't really necessarily have too, anything truly against them. I mean, the one time we played them, right, they kicked our butts in Penn, at Penn State, right, um, the week after they beat Ohio State um, in 2016. And, I mean – yeah, that was frustrating. It was a frustrating week. Um, you know, kind of a lot of tension kind of all over the place. But, I mean, as far as, you know, teams I dislike in the Big Ten, they're probably, you know, middle of the pack because I don't have anything truly against them, right? I wasn't on that 2017 football team that lost on that last play, yeah. right? I wasn't on that team, even though I was frustrated watching it. Um, I mean, they're probably somewhere in the middle. I mean, obviously, like, you know, when you look at it, right, you got – Nebraska, Minnesota, Wisconsin up there. Um, I'm tossing uh, Michigan State up there. <laughs> um, I'm tossing. I will forever hate Michigan State. <laughs> yeah, forever yeah, hate Michigan play. State. <laughs> um, and, you know, some of the other teams I'm really indifferent to. Um, Michigan, Michigan's always going to be up there. Just for me being from Ohio, just growing up in Michigan, nah. <laughs> um, and, you know, the rest of the Big Ten teams can just – I mean, they're kind of interchangeable um, at that point. But, no, I mean, uh, you know, I have, uh, you know, a great deal of respect for their program. Um, they're always, you know, a tough football team. Um, but, you know, I love to see, um, you know, Coach James Franklin lose. Um, and that's always that's always uh, fun. So uh, definitely excited, though, for this week. Um, but, you know, I don't really I actually have anything against Penn State. I know that they got good players and they have, you know, good coaches over there who, um, you know, love football and know the game. So, absolutely. Um, there's two games where I can legitimately remember exactly where I was at the moment that the play happened, and it was the Michigan State game. Um, obviously, you were there. I was, I was in a hotel room in Las Vegas. I had a lot of money on Iowa to win the game outright, and obviously wanted <laughs> Iowa to win. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, "Come on, baby, come on, baby." And then <laughs> he just extends his hand. I was like, "Oh my!" Like I just like felt just numb. I was like, this just sucks. Yeah. Like that was so, uh, I, and obviously it's not even comparable to anything you all felt as players, but it just, that was just so unfortunate. Um, and then that Penn state game, 2017, I was at a wedding and I was watching the, I, you know, we're all, everyone's supposed to be dancing. I'm like, there's a Iowa game on right now. I'm going to watch that. Yeah. And so I'm at the bar, like yeah. sitting like, Oh baby, we're going to beat Penn state. This is going to be great. Come on. And I was like, Hey bartender, can I get uh, like 10 shots for me and my buddies after Iowa wins? So yeah, yeah. So he pours the shots. We're sitting there, and they score. And I was like, "Looks like I'm taking these shots out of depression today." All right, cool. That'll be fun. <laughs> so not not exactly ideal. Those are the two games. Though. I can remember exactly where I was. Um, Lashawn, as always, it has been a blast talking to you. Uh, where can the folks find you at? Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter. Um, you know, just at my name, right? And you can also find me on Instagram at my name as well, Lashawn Daniels Jr. Um, and then if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, you can go ahead and find me on LinkedIn. Um, 
it's just my name and you'll find me so uh yeah that's where i'm at uh most of these days so i'm looking forward to hearing from you guys love it man and any last second words for before we close out the show uh you know not much i'm just looking forward to next week um it should be exciting for um you know us, us iowa hawkeye fans the state of iowa and college football in general so um you know let's get it done and go hawks Heck yeah, man. Hopefully it'll be a good game. Uh, we should have game day there. There's some rumors floating around that game day might be coming. So that'd be a lot of fun to have game day at Kinnick. It'd be a lot of fun to watch that game regardless of game day there or not. I'm excited. Uh, we're going to be talking about that the entire week this week, wherever you get your podcast at and also on YouTube at Locked on Hawkeyes. And I want to remind you all to check out the Locked on Bets podcast. The Locked on Bets podcast hosted by your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling. Get daily picks, blowout specials, wrong team favorite picks, and Lee Sterling's lock of the day. Follow the Locked On Bets podcast brought to you by betonline.ag, wherever you get your podcast app. And that will do it for our show today. Appreciate you all tuning in to the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. As always, every single game, we are breaking it down. Me and LaShawn, what happened in that game? Iowa 5-0, and and that's what ultimately matters to this point. Thank you all for tuning in to another episode of the Locked On Hawkeyes podcast. Have a fantastic weekend, and as always, let's go Hawks.